Glorious. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to Kettlebells and Cocktails. I'm your host, Nikki Brazier, and this is another uh, focus on female episode. So I am joined today by Alexis Morgan. Hey, Alexis, how's it going? Hi, so good. I'm so happy to be here. I am so happy to have you here, and I'm very excited because your expertise is kind of like the hot button topic. I feel like when I first said, I'm going to do a few episodes that focus on, uh, you know, women's issues or female issues or whatever, you know, we kind of are talking about in our space as it relates to CrossFit or this sports Mm -hmm. space in general, one of the first and also like most common notes that I got was, can you please talk about pelvic floor training? Because holy moly, I feel like you as a pelvic floor PT, you're like this magical, mystical unicorn thing (laughs) that like everyone and their mother since getting pregnant or learning their friends are pregnant or, you know, having their own babies or recovering from their own babies. I've been like, oh, there's this new thing called pelvic floor PT and it's about to change my life, but no one really knows what it is. No one can really like put their finger on, oh my God, it's (laughs) this exact thing. Um, And so I'm excited to have you here to kind of just dive into all the things that you do. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, I love that you're saying like everyone's talking about it or everyone's going because I feel like that's as a pelvic floor PT, like that's kind of our, our, our MO is like to get everyone to know that care is available. It's, it's so, it's so crazy to think about, you know, before you have your baby, you have all of these visits, right. During pregnancy. And especially like in the month, like you're going every other week to then every single week. And all the care is about you in labor, all the care and attention is on you. And then as soon as baby comes out in whatever way they do, attention immediately goes to baby and all of that attention and care that was once, you know, focused on the mom is gone. And then we look at all of these we look at postpartum, you have so many now visits with your baby for your baby. And you may have one visit for mom, maybe Maybe. if she goes. Yeah. And usually it's like a, yep, all clear. We're good to go. Go have sex, go have, go exercise, like do all the things. Yep. And it's leaving people like, huh? Mm -hmm. What? And that may be at two weeks postpartum. I just had a, um, I just had a client this past week say that she got cleared from her doctor to go back to exercise at two weeks after she had a C-section. Um, uh-huh. Uh, and then what? What? <laughs> I've made of questions. Yeah. Hmm. And then, you know, some people wait 12 weeks. So it's just like, it's just, it is such a space that has a lot of question marks. Um, and and so it's our job as public floor PTs to really help guide that process, um, in that, in pregnancy, as well as in postpartum, um, to make you, to make it a safe return, to make you feel confident in your body, to really focus on you, the mom, because everyone else is really focused on, on baby. Yeah. Yeah. I find that, or I should ask you, I guess, do you find that it's a a little bit of a newer school of thought because, and the reason I asked this is like, I was so scared of being pregnant and having a Mm -hmm. kid, like was terrified me. So I'm the person that did like every ounce of research possible and talked to a bazillion people and read the great stories, read the horror stories, whatever. I've, I considered myself particularly educated (laughs) on all the things that could happen. Um, and so of course I found a ton of the sort of like normalizing, like, yeah, you'll like pee yourself every time you do double unders or like, you know, like, like all those types of stories. And so when I first sought out my own pelvic floor PT, it was because I knew I didn't want to do any of that. And, and I, I hope yeah. to not go through that. And I, I think I'm the, I've always had a little bit of ab separation in my life. Like I always just have presented pressure in my abdomen a little bit in maybe incorrectly or in a way that, that caused some separation. So I'm like, I don't want that to get worse. And I want to make sure I'm breathing right. Like all these things. So I started seeing a pelvic floor PT when I was maybe six or eight or six or seven months pregnant rather, Mm -hmm. um, for like a few sessions. Yeah, it was great. And my mom was like, what the fuck is that? 
And so, <laughs> and so that's why I'm wondering, like all these people mm-hmm. who like gave me these, this advice, it's like, oh yeah, you know, like your, your pelvis might never feel the same, or you might just pee yourself every time you sneeze. Like, and that's just motherhood. Like, I'm wondering if this whole, your entire field, like your entire job, is it just newer? Is it a newer school of thought? Or are we just talking about it more? Yeah, I think it's, it's both. It's growing dramatically, but we have, we have old literature like in the seventies and eighties, um, about different exercises of the pelvic floor. But I mean, it, there is no doubt that when we start looking at the literature, especially even like looking into CrossFit and pelvic floor health, like that specific literature is coming out. And, and so with that, with the rise in um, popularity of CrossFit and with the way that we can now communicate and talk um, so much more freely, um, it thankfully is becoming more of more of a norm. Um, and so it's actually becoming so much of a discussed topic that we're really, we need more pelvic floor PTs Mm -hmm. available like in towns and cities all over the country. Um, and so that's the other part of my mission is, um, so, so locally I, I own a clinic, um, where I treat people in my town, um, who are pregnant and postpartum and having any kind of pelvic floor issues, which we can kind of get into what that looks like. Um, but then I also, I travel on weekends across the country, um, teaching other uh, physical therapists how to do what I do, like how to work with fitness athletes through this phase of life. And so, because it's such a huge need, like we've got to get people understanding that women are going to keep crossfitting through their pregnancies Mm -hmm. and they're going to be returning to it. And so how can we, how can we come alongside you and, and really, um, you know, as I like to say, like, we want to optimize pelvic health while optimizing performance and, and and really for so many female athletes, like both of those things are really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is like the nichiest niche of them all. Right. It's like, (laughs) it's like not enough that you need to be like a women's specific PT. It's like also everything we do in CrossFit is so specific as well. It's like, you know, you, you're not going to treat a postpartum CrossFitter the same way that you're going to treat a postpartum runner, because we just have, we have different needs. And my, you know, I was lucky enough where my, my pelvic floor PT is not a CrossFitter, but she's educated and she's not Mm -hmm. stupid. (laughs) So -hmm. I could ask her questions like, well, when can I do box jumps or when can I put a a belt back on to, to lift or to squat? And she had those answers, but I just feel like that's a real, that's a real crossroads of like, you need to know all of these things. And yeah. I don't know when I was pregnant, I found a lot of literature and a lot of research about like yoga or about mm-hmm. running and not a lot about the type of training that we do. So totally. So yeah. I'm glad that you're, you're finding a way to bring more people into the fold because it gets real specific. It really does. And, you know, like I've kind of nerded out on, on this literature and try to like, look back at the history of like, why is everyone getting advised to do yoga? Not that yoga is bad, but that's just not, um, for CrossFitters, what CrossFitters are going to do. They're going to, we're going to do CrossFit. Right. Yeah. And we're going to ignore mobility and yoga every Saturday morning. Like everyone else. Totally. (laughs) We're going to buy the like Ramwad subscription and never log in. That's what we do. It's our favorite thing. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, actually, fun fact, I, um, I'm like in a contemplation phase of going to a yoga studio in my town because um, my like health forward docs are like, you know, you should really have a recovery day. And I asked my husband the other day, I'm like, have you seen that yoga mat I bought? He's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you, you, you threw that away a yep, while ago. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I've had that conversation many a time at home and, and yeah. replaced that yoga mat many a time. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But, um, but yeah, so with that, like, um, in the, in the seventies and eighties or even before, like 
women have not been involved in sport for very long. Totally. You know, it's, it's only been like less than 200 years where like it was, it's not where now it's normal for us to still do the things we do when we're menstruating. Right. Cause like before when a woman was menstruating, like she's out of pocket. And so there was no way for us to really get involved in sport. And, and then this of course has like, has just evolved, but, you know, running became one of the more, um, it's the easiest accessible sport right. that we can do. Um, so way a ton of women people are doing that. Um, and therefore that becomes the, the thing that's, that's studied, um, and in yoga kind of similarly, like it's, it's calm. We're going through the range of motion. Mm-hmm. So that must be safe as if like the opposite of that doing a high intensity interval training, like is, is unsafe. Like, just because we don't have the evidence there doesn't, doesn't mean that it's unsafe. Right. Um, and so, I, but I think that's kind of where that, where that started out. And, and so there's just a lot of fear and has been um, much less so now than there once was, but we still have, still have a ways to go. Yeah, totally. um, but so much fear around, um, you know, around getting your heart rate up and, you know, lifting heavy weights and, and all of that. Yeah, I know. I've told this story before, but it might, it's my favorite thing to <laughs> recount how I was really frustrated in the beginning of my pregnancy that there weren't a lot of resources or guidelines. And I know that every body is different, but when you're new at it and it's my first kid, I needed just someone to tell, I needed someone I could trust to tell mm-hmm. me like, you can work out to this extent, right? Because mm-hmm. we're, and, and so many people were like, oh, well, you'll just know your body will just like downregulate itself. And I'm like, I have for 10 years, taught mm-hmm. my body to ignore every sign mm-hmm. to downregulate. That's what CrossFit is. So yeah. I remember calling in because it like you Google 10 different websites, give you 10 different answers about your heart rate or how totally. much you can lift or what percentage of your max. It, so I just called my OB. I'm like, I want someone, this is the one woman I decided I could trust for the next 40 weeks of my life. Mm-hmm. And the nurse was like, yeah, we usually tell pregnant women not to lift more than like 15 and 25 pounds. And I was like, I... I had at maybe like seven or eight weeks, like very early on, like went and queen and jerked like 165, which is big weight for me and felt yeah. excellent, felt excellent. So I was like, <laughs> clearly that's not, clearly that's not right. Mm-hmm. Um, but also clearly uh, I don't have an answer. No one can give me an answer and that frustrates yeah. me and still frustrates yeah. me. Yeah. Well, so it's, it's, um, and so it's really cool. So the, um, so the company that I, that I work with where I'm, I'm teaching other physical therapists, that's, um, the Institute of Clinical Excellence and, and my colleague that I work with in this space, she is in the research realm. Mm. And so she just recently, I don't, I can't remember if I sent this to you or not, um, but she just recently, along with some other uh, researchers in this, in this space, um, did a, did a survey for kind of one of our first pieces of literature to really, um, to really look at female CrossFitters through pregnancy, lifting weight and Mm. kind of understanding some of those outcomes, um, birth and like, you know, we're, we're always seem to be interested on, again, on the, on the baby, like what are the fetal outcomes? Um, and we do want to know, like, what are the pelvic floor outcomes? Yeah. Um, and so this is really one of the first, uh, it's not been published yet, but one of the first studies looking at that, because before we can study women exercising, like under really heavy weights while being pregnant, like before an IRB is going to say like, yes, we approve that. We first have to demonstrate that people are already doing it. I see. Okay. Interesting. So that was kind of the first, the first step there was showing like, Hey, women are doing this and they're not dying. (laughs) Like (laughs) imagine that. (laughs) And actually like they're, they're doing great. Yeah. Um, and so like, you know, they looked at outcomes like mental, mental status. Cause, and I know you've talked a lot about that too, like, mm-hmm. um, looking at rates of anxiety and depression, postpartum oh. and, and pelvic floor dysfunction, all of that. And it's just, and, and, and like, I love it because it just feeds our bias, but it's like exercise is good, yes. you know, and, 
and CrossFit is included in that. Yes. You know, we don't have to completely change what we're doing um, the minute we get pregnant. Um, and so, so anyway, it's, you're right. Like it's the hot button. Like this field is just like at the beginnings of this massive explosion. Um, and so it is, it is really fun. Um, but there are so many, so many myths that, you know, we're, I, I, sometimes I feel like my job is just to undo what things, what people are, are, are saying like online, you know, I bet. Yeah. And a little bit of a therapist because women are coming to you at like the most fragile time of their lives. Yeah. I would love to know, like, what are, what are some of the, the most common things that you hear or questions that you Mm -hmm. get when people are like, Oh, you're pelvic floor PT. Great. I need to know how to not pee myself for the rest of my life. Like what are some of those things? Yeah. Well, so, um, within the pelvic floor, we have, uh, we have three holes, women. Um, we've got the hole that we pee out of. We've got our vagina, the hole that we uh, deliver a baby through. And then we have our anus, the hole that we have bowel movements through. It's never and not so- funny to say the word anus on a podcast. Keep going. <laughs> Hilarious. I know. <laughs> Anytime we talk about, I talk about farting, um, you know, it, in our, in our course. And I'm like, I'm going to call it farting. I'm not calling it passing wind. I'm not right, doing right. it without a smile on my face because yeah, it's it funny. just is what it okay? is. And it, it's amazing. <laughs> we call and it tooting in this house for the record, but yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Farting is, tooting. we'll go with that. My, my slide actually is, um, it just has like all the colloquial, like all the terms that we use for farting. <laughs> It was my, it was like my most proud slide of, Amazing. The, of the 500 slide deck. Um, <laughs> for that one. Like, Please slide. screenshot that and send it to me immediately. <laughs> I'll um, learn some new words. Yeah, exactly. I, I like, I sent it actually to, um, to our, our CEO and COO and I was like, you know, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to use this for our course. And, uh, one of them, he was like, Oh, you forgot cutting ass. <laughs> Like, like, oh, yes. sorry. You're like in like keynote, like adding that just... back in. <laughs> yeah. God, amazing. So anyway, keep going. Um, but yeah, so three holes. And so essentially we can have issues with any of the three holes. Um, and so the first one you already mentioned, like difficulty with leaking. Um, so that can be, so you can have leaking, leaking urine um, in life or in sport or in both. So life being like when you cough, when you sneeze, leaking. Um, And if you have it with that, you're likely also going to have it in sport because whatever you're doing in sport is often going to be more intense than a cough or a sneeze. Right. Um, But you may only have that incontinence or the leaking in your sport. Um, And so we're, we're kind of seeing a, a, a rise in that and, starting to call it like athletic incontinence, um, purely because the pressures that we're adding on our systems, like it's just more than what our muscles are, have been used to, um, which of course can be impacted by pregnancy Mm -hmm. and by delivery. Um, but yeah, so there, there can be issues with, with that, with those sphincters, those muscles, like not closing shut, um, when we want them to. Um, and there's so many things we can, you know, we can do to manipulate those, those variables. And essentially all it is, is like, we're trying to help you manage those, those pressures, um, while building up your strength in your pelvic floor so that you can do all of these things that you want to do. Um, kind of the old school of thought was like, Ooh, if you're, if you're leaking, you probably shouldn't do that. Right. Um, like right. double unders or, or, or box jumps, but it's like, well, if we go by that, then we also, I guess should say you shouldn't be coughing or sneezing, but wait a second. <laughs> we can't control for that. Wait a second. <laughs> so we're going to be okay with the coughing, sneezing. Cause we can't control for it, but we're going to say, no, you can't do double unders and box jumps because we can control for that. Well, Doesn't what if we just sense. made it? Yeah. What if we just made it to where, I mean, and truly like for us CrossFitters, like double unders and box jumps are to us as coughing and sneezing are to anyone else. Like they show up and we do them. We don't love it, but we do it. Right. 100%. (laughs) Yep. 
Yep. So it's a non-negotiable. So, so we talk about like ways that we can, uh, you know, manipulate those things while we're getting our pelvic floor stronger. So that is something that people come to you often to say like, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And it's something that, that improves. Um, and it's so, it's so fun too, with, with that one and, and kind of with any of these issues, but, um, like some people feel like, oh, I have a five-year-old, like it's probably too late. Right. Yeah. 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 Totally. Or, or even I have an 18 year old, like, oh, I'm probably just done for. Right. And because you've likely never done anything for those muscles. Um, it is it remember how, when you started CrossFit, how you just had all those like newbie gains and it's totally. so fun. Totally. It's the same thing in the pelvic floor. You get all these like newbie gains of your pelvic floor and it doesn't matter if it's been 18 years, 18 months, 18 days, like we're going to see progress. And so it's, it's really fun. That's awesome. So this is it's your sign for late. anyone listening. If you've been peeing yourself, like no matter for how yeah. long, um, find yeah. a, find a pelvic floor PT near you. Cause you could, you can help that. You totally can. And cool. nobody died of of peed pants, but right, also right. like, um, yeah. and so like, I'm, I'm always just so hyper aware of like, you don't have to go get that, but know that it's available to you. And right. if you're, if you want that, like you should, you should go see someone and, and work on that. Um, because you don't, you don't have to have the, the peed pants, the embarrassment, someone, um, someone messaged me the other day and said that they had, um, they had a double under workout and noticed like either during, or maybe at the end, because they were so into it, like there was just a puddle of pee underneath Mm. them and just immediately ran out to the car and was crying and just mortified. (gasps) And like, those are the things where it's like, Oh, you know, that could, that could make someone never, never show back up. Right. You know? And so it's like, it's those things. It's like, no, let's, let's get you to where you can control that. Like, let's get it to where your pelvic issues are not stopping you from your athletic goals. Yeah. Oh, that's you know? so sad. I don't, I don't I want know. anyone to ever feel that way. And it's not, um, it's not always a linear journey, right? Like that's the, that's totally. the other thing is that like, I find, um, cause I did a lot of work on this. I don't really have those like leakage issues, mm-hmm. but I also find that like, you know, 90% of the time I won't have any issues. And like 10% of the time I might start doing double unders and be like, Oh, am I going to, am I going to pee? Like I need to breathe a little differently or I need to mm-hmm. hold my, I need to hold my core in a little bit differently. And that is not something I ever had to think about pre baby. So it is like work yeah. kind of for the rest of your life. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, or, or if I'm squatting really heavy, I'm like, did I pee before this? Cause it's not like squatting makes me pee, but on a full bladder is certainly more difficult to control than it once was. Um, and so I feel like that's something that people need to need to learn and understand that it's Mm -hmm. like going to see you, isn't going to make it so that you never have an issue again, but it certainly will teach you how to deal with all of the it empowers that you. come up. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It should so empower you. And like, and that's just like, I feel like that's so important. Um, you know, is to always like, you should always get a lot out of your, your, your physical therapy or, you know, your coaching, like whatever that is, it, it should not feel like you're, you're having anything taken away from you. Right. Um, and, and yeah, totally. Like it's, it's learning these tools and then consistently working on it. And it's, you know, again, there's so many parallels with this and CrossFit. It's like, we're constantly striving, you know, to get better. Like when you hit that Fran time that you wanted, it's not like you're like, cool, good to go. You know, you're, you right now I'm done with CrossFit forever. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Never, never so, going back to the gym. All set. Exactly. Yeah. So I feel like that, you know, when we're, when we're constantly pushing our body and our muscles, like we're constantly, we're, we're just, we're working on, on all of that together. Can you explain um, but yeah. a little bit, can you explain a little bit about, um, like what, what a session with you is like, because I feel like when mm. I first started going, I would come home and my husband would be like, so did they like stick things up in your vagina? And I'm like, it's <laughs> not really, 
I mean, sometimes yes, I guess, but like, it's not really how these sessions go for me, at least it was more like legitimate PT, what you would yeah. guess. So can you just explain what those visits are kind of like? Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you asked that because I definitely feel like that's, <laughs> I can see why that's like a, such a, a mystery or that like, you know, right. that you're talking about. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. What? Or like, I don't what know about happened? you, but I sometimes get targeted for like the vagina trainer as like oh, an girl. ad on Instagram. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, and Matt saw it once and was like, is this what they did for you? And I was like, no, that is, what? <laughs> is that what you think? Like, no, I wasn't going to like get my rocks off at the PT's <laughs> office. Like this is not how, anyway, so I'll let you answer that question. Oh, that's hilarious. I love that. Yeah. So, um, typically, um, you know, the, a first visit is going to look like potentially filling out some paperwork prior, whatever. Um, but then coming in and, and really like understanding, um, the whole, the whole picture, um, so if you're pregnant, understanding, like, how did you get pregnant? You know, was that a natural version? Was that, you know, were you utilizing IVF or IUI? Like, what did that journey to this point look like? Um, and then postpartum as well. Like, what was that labor and delivery like? You know, a third of people um, describe their births as traumatic. Oh, yes. in one of those people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and about 10% are actually, um, fall into the category of having PTSD from mm -hmm. their birth. Um, and so, you know, that plays a role in how we experience symptoms or pain or, or whatever in the pelvic floor. So anyway, so understanding like the full picture of the person, um, and, and kind of that history moving into, moving into this space. Um, I feel like, yeah, I do a lot of talking. I do. A, I ask so many questions. I mean, I, I'd go ahead and warn people up front. Like I'm going to ask questions until you're like, Oh my gosh, I don't even know the answers to your questions. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> like I am just, I, I really just want to get all of the details of, you know, are you, are you having that leaking? Um, are you having pain with sex? Um, have you had pain with, um, with tampons? Like, has that yeah. always been an issue or is that a new issue? Because that's going to kind of guide us. So, um, you know, are you, are you having, um, are you having constipation? Like, do mm -hmm. you feel like you have to really like bear down and push, um, to poop every three days or are you pooping pretty easily every day? Like understanding all of these things. Um, and again, sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, I did not know I was talking about poop and pee and all of that. Uh, okay. Well, uh, to those people, I have to ask, <laughs> do you not have pregnancy hemorrhoids? Because congratulations, the rest of us <laughs> did. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Exactly. Yeah. So, so we really, we talk a lot and I really try to understand. And, and honestly, sometimes, um, that's all I do on the first visit. If there's a lot to unpack, um, and I haven't even mentioned like sexual trauma. Um, but if there's a lot to unpack there, um, it may, it may take us a bit. Um, but if, if we're, whatever, however long that winds up taking the, the kind of the next phase is understanding, um, in their, in their bodies, like, are there other issues going on? Do you have back pain as well or hip pain? Um, because some of the, sometimes, uh, pelvic floor muscles can create pain around the hip or can create low back pain. And so I'm trying to really like, you know, connect all of these puzzle pieces together to figure out uh, where's the root of this issue. Mm -hmm. And so that may lead us towards, you know, looking at your back or hip, um, but eventually at some point you're here for pelvic floor PT. Um, so we're going to do a pelvic assessment. And, um, and so what that entails is as, as you're aware, um, but for our listeners who may be like, what does they're just waiting entail? for it <laughs> like building the suspense um but yeah so I put out sheets and then I leave the room and I have the person take their bottoms off take their underwear off 
lie underneath the sheets and then I come back in so they're completely covered and we talk about what's going to happen next um and I describe the full thing and I'm like if you're uncomfortable with any of this at any point like we are going to stop it's not worth you being severely uncomfortable like no amount of information is worth that um but assuming they're comfortable, then they're lying on their backs. And first of all, I'm just looking and seeing like, okay, if they're postpartum, like, are, do you still have stitches present? That could be causing like those feelings of like heaviness or feeling like a tennis ball is like at your vagina or coming at like that, that feeling sometimes stitches present that you thought were gone, but you've been afraid to look and mm -hmm. you're not touching it. Like, you know, so, so oh yeah, no, I, I did not look for like weeks and weeks and weeks. I was like, I don't want to know. Yeah. I don't want to see. I'm afraid there's like totally. a gaping black hole down there and it's never going to be the same again. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It, it totally becomes the same again, but like, yeah, I understand exactly how I would, I would have just gone in there blind. I'm like, what does it look right. like? Tell me what it looks right. like. I can't look. Or you get a, a, you get a friend or spouse or partner to look and they're like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, what it looks like what body parts. I don't know. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, and you know, always like, I mean, for the most part, everything looks completely normal, but hearing, hearing that from someone who actually knows just totally. makes me know someone go, Oh, yep. 100%. I'm normal. Mm -hmm. Oh, that reminds me. Have you seen the, um, have you seen the Netflix documentary? Um, oh shoot. What's the name? Um, pleasure. The, I cannot think no. of the name of it right now. Pursuit of pleasure. It's not pursuit. It's something pleasure. Okay. It's, um, there's like a three, a three part, uh, like docu series and it's all, it's about pleasure. So it's about like uh, orgasm and like understanding Amazing. your anatomy. Amazing. Oh, I totally yeah. will watch that. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, and one of the, one of the kind of the main ladies that they're, that they're interviewing is Emily Nagowski. I don't know if you've heard of her, no. um, but she is, um, she's a researcher, she's an author and she's all in this like sex education, um, area. And she has a great book. Um, and now I'm trying to think of the name of that book. Come never you think are. Oh, I was going to say, you can never think of names of things while you're on podcasts is like plagues yeah. me constantly, but you but remembered come as you are, come as you are, which Amazing. is like a brilliant, a brilliant, um, you know, title, title. Amazing. um, but she, she is just, she's always talking about how, like, we are all normal. There are so many variations of normal, like the outer labia may be smaller, may be larger, may be lopsided. Like you may be able to see the vaginal opening or that like canal when, when your legs are, or maybe you can't, maybe everything's kind of close together. Like maybe there's hair, maybe there's not, hair. there's so many variations and it's all normal. And just hearing that and understanding that like, ah, oh, I am normal. Yep adds so i mean that's just that is such a huge huge thing to understand yeah. and to yeah. believe yes i feel like you're speaking directly to my experience was my poor pelvic floor pt i feel like that's what i asked her over and over like, was this okay is this normal was this okay yeah. or I, what i what i also kept asking her was like am i am i gonna ruin it am mm -hmm. i gonna ruin it mm -hmm. if i start running am i gonna ruin it if i if i don't breathe appropriately am i gonna ruin it if i do this type of sit up and that instead of that type of sit up yeah. am i gonna make it wrong? Am I going to worsen it? Or, you know, am I going to make it not normal effectively? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what she had to mentally reassure me of constantly. And she was like, too. no, you're safe. She's like, you're fucking you're fine. Good. Shut up. You're yeah. fine. Totally. <laughs> anyway, anyway, keep going. So, um, yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Every, in, inquiring minds want to know how do you actually yeah. get up in there and assess yeah. that everything's looking good. Totally. So that is, um, so much better in my opinion than, a than a gynecologic exam. Oh my God. Yes. So much. The speculum can get fucked. That it's thing. Cold. It's Who made that? God, a man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, no, so we just use a gloved finger and some lube and I, um, so, you know, we have different joints on our finger and I essentially use each of my joints to assess inside the vagina and feeling all around the vagina. I, I treat it like, um, like it's a clock 
Mm -hmm. And so, you know, at 12 o'clock, one o'clock, and I'm like feeling all around and I feel at the first layer, the second layer and the third layer. And then I get you to do like a Kegel or a pelvic floor contraction. And I want to feel like, what does that feel like around my finger? Is it super duper weak? Well, if you just had a baby, it's going to be weak. Mm -hmm. Right. And, but understanding that, like, is it, is it really, really tight and sh- like I'm putting in quotation marks, like strong, like just overly, overly tense, kind of like how, you know, if you're stressed and you have your yes. ears in your, or your shoulders in your ears, yes. like those tight muscles, like we can carry tension in our pelvic floor there too. So I, at, or as a pelvic floor PT, like I'm assessing the muscles and we access the muscles via the vagina. And I feel it with my finger. And sometimes like if you're having pain, I'll, we'll recreate that, that pain. And I know it's coming from, you know, this muscle on your left two you know, two centimeters in, like I can recreate exactly that. And now we know where the problem is. That's and so interesting. yeah, it's, it's so interesting. Like, um, I'll never forget in my, in my training where where I was learning how to do this. Um, I first was just, I had no idea what I was doing, you know, I'm like poking around Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the girl was like, Oh my gosh. I'm like, Oh no, I'm like poked a hole in her. I don't know what's going on. Why is she saying that? And she's like that you just recreated my hip pain that I've gotten with running for five years. Uh And no one, you know, she's a PT at like, no one's been able to figure out what is going on. And it was a muscle in her pelvic floor causing, causing her problems. Hmm. So sometimes, you know, we find old stuff as we're, as we're assessing for something completely different. Um, we, we find some older stuff and we're able to resolve that. So that's kind of, yeah another little magical unicorn weird thing that happens. Totally. totally, Yeah. (laughs) But yeah. So once we, or go ahead. No, no, no. Keep going. Once we, once I understand like what's going on at the pelvic floor and like, do you even know, like when I say do a pelvic floor contraction, like, do you have that mind body connection? I did not. Like when you would say that, I learned about it in PT school for the first time and, and it was sort of brushed over, um, but it was like, pick up a blueberry with your vagina. And I was like, what? That's yeah, weird. What does that mean? Or like, you know, drink a smoothie with it. I'm like, okay, why put the food stuff in the vagina? I don't get it. I'm like, I don't oh my God. My mouth. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Like there's, there's so many people who don't know what we mean when we say do a Kegel or do a pelvic floor contraction. And that's kind of like one of the things that's sort of, you know, if there's anything talked about with pelvic floor muscles, it seems to be that you should do a contraction, you know, you should do a Kegel. Yeah. 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 But like or half you, the people don't know. I totally understand what you're saying. Cause I, like, I think I've, I've always known what a Kegel is because it's very like, it's very like, it's your vagina squeeze it. Yeah. But when I was first learning how to continuously do CrossFit while pregnant, the Mm -hmm. the, sort of the common phrase is exhale and lift your pelvic floor. And I would constantly be like, the fuck does that mean? (laughs) I'm like, and I would be like, am I, does it mean doing a Kegel? And everyone'd be like, no. And I'd be like, does it mean like squeezing my abs? Like someone's going to punch me in the abs. And everyone'd be like, no. I'm like, so what? How do I know if I'm doing it? And I needed to go to a specialist, uh, someone who was trained, uh, someone who was one of the um, pregnant and postpartum athleticism coaches, which is Brianna Battles' program, to watch me breathe and like watch what my stomach did in order to help me figure out what to do. I'm like, you can't just say exhale and squeeze and lift your pelvic floor. I I don't know what that means. Yeah. And and it's funny too, because like, it's, it's not hard. And, but it is something that you, you need skilled eyes or, or hands on to, to, to just confirm that that's Mm -hmm. what we want you, you know, that that's what we want you to do. Um, and, and, and so then like, once we kind of know what's going on, I really don't spend a ton of time with my finger just in someone's vagina. Right. That's not what, 
that's not what we do for pelvic floor PT. Like when we know what's going on, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give you some relaxation work. If you need to just, you know, like the trap example, like if you just need to kind of calm those muscles down, I'm going to give you some contraction work or some strengthening work, which by the way, like you can, as long as you understand that connection, like once we can get you to understand that connection, then you can work on that when you're doing planks, yep. like hanging from a bar, mm-hmm. you know, you can think about it while you're squatting. Like when you're, when you're bracing, like there's so many things. Once you understand you can, you can use CrossFit, um, to, you know, strengthen even more so that your pelvic floor and that like mind body connection oh, to yeah. it. Totally. Yeah. I remember getting a ton of exercises that were like, they were things that you probably already are doing too. Like, you know, some bird dogs or some cat Mm -hmm. cows or some, those kinds of things. And when I no longer could, uh, do pushups, that was my thing where like, I know some people, some women can do pushups or elevated pushups their entire pregnancy. I couldn't, I was presenting pressure in a way that Mm -hmm. made me feel uncomfortable. So I couldn't. So instead of pushups, I would do a movement that my PT gave me, or instead of like hollow rocks, which were always a little bit too much for me when I was pregnant, yes. I would do a different abdominal strengthening movement that my pelvic floor. So I just worked it into my everyday, like I still went to the gym every day yeah. and I still did all the exercises, you know, and instead of whatever, you know, pull up at some point mm-hmm. I was doing some pal presses, which was something that she gave me there too. So it was like, I was working everything into my normal routine and just yeah. modifying as necessary. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We're just such huge advocates for continuing to go to the gym. Now, obviously like there are, I'm, I'm not saying you're a bad mom. If you didn't go, like Mm -hmm. you had so many reasons why you, why you couldn't, like, I am not saying anything to that, but if you can go, go. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're not doing the exact same workout, whether that's pregnancy or postpartum, maybe you are. Yeah. I, I I see a lot of times, um, unnecessary modifications just because they're pregnant or just because postpartum. Like, and like, I'm curious to know. Yeah. Well, like, you know, in the first trimester, there's really not much to modify. Mm -hmm. Like your heart rate is going to be your resting heart rate goes up. Your breathing rate starts to go up. Your blood volume is like massively increasing. So there's, there's a lot of changes that you're feeling. Um, but you're, especially if it's a first, first pregnancy and your body has not yet like, you know, stretched out to the point Mm -hmm. where you're, you're showing much, you know, in subsequent pregnancies, it's, it's, you're much faster to show. Um, but in the, in like, in a first trimester, I'm not making a ton of modifications Mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you, like, you know, if you're running and you're feeling good, as long as you're not having that pressure, like, like what you mentioned, like feeling pressure down at your, at your vagina, um, as long as you're not, it's not causing you to leak and you're not having pain, let's keep going Yeah, and let's continue training those muscles. And, um, and it's been, and it's been kind of fun to like, to see. So, um, so the faculty that, that I work with, we've been, so two of the four of us have been pregnant in the last year and and then they're now postpartum. Um, and so we're kind of like self-experimenting and, um, here and here recently, uh, the, the two that were pregnant, we kept them hanging on the bar the whole time. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And, um, so at the end, like they were not doing pull-ups. They were just simply like working, working their grip and like an active shoulder position. to work in the lats, like continuing to train as much as we can so that we don't have that deep, all those detraining trained effects. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard whenever you've lost that muscular capacity. And so any, anything we can do, you know, to keep training grip, to keep training your abs, not just the six pack abs, but like all of your obliques and your, mm-hmm. your, like all the core muscles, um, your lats, like all of that, as much as we can continue training through pregnancy, we're going to, and then as early as really your life allows in your body, um, we're, we're going to get back to that postpartum. 
Yeah. What are some of the, what are some of the big questions that people come to you with postpartum? I know we covered kind of mm-hmm. like, you know, like I, I don't want to pee for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. but in terms of like training, in terms of getting back to training, what do you think are some of the big ones that people are like, Oh my God, Alexis, please help me because I want to meh not have a diastasis. Yeah. That's like probably the biggest probably one. Huh? The yeah. biggest one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so with that, um, and people pronounce it differently and they're all fine. Diastasis, <laughs> diastasis. Uh, sometimes we just make the acronym DRA, diastasis, yep. rectus abdominis, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's 100% normal in every single pregnancy in order to carry a baby full term, it's got to go somewhere. Right. And it's not going massively up, although it does go up and impact your, your lungs. It's not going all the way down until they're birthing and we can't go backwards because our spine is there. So we have to go forward. Our abdominal wall has to expand Mm -hmm. and we have this natural, you know, the line in the center of of our, of our bellies, which in an, in a CrossFit athlete, you know, we see those six pack abs. Um, we see that line in the center, but that is by design, like it's going to stretch and like, it's really kind of a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, and we, we joke about it because, um, like older men who, you know, have the, like, central adiposity, just the big, the big gut, like Mm -hmm. (laughs) they have diastasis and they're not worried about it. And in fact, whenever they have the little coning, um, they think it's a party trick and they're showing people and laughing about it. Oh my God. How funny. Yeah. I never really thought about it that way. And babies have it too. And we're like, Oh, it's so cute. And then when it's on us, it's the worst problem. Like it's Mm -hmm. pathological, you know, and we just, we start to freak out, but it's, it's normal. Mm -hmm. And it takes a while for us to build strength back after pregnancy. I mean, it takes a while for everything to just kind of come back together, like all the swelling and, and everything, you know, postpartum, um, like takes about, I think it's 12 weeks for the, for the uterus to come back to it's normal, much less everything surrounding right, that. Right. Um, and so, so anyway, so I like to explain that to people because sometimes I'll have people very, you know, three or four weeks postpartum, um, worrying about it. And I'm like, listen, it's too, we're not going to worry, you know, right. we, yeah. we're, this is normal. Um, and, but yeah, so, so what can we do? Um, in that postpartum time frame, and I think it's important first to say that um, you know, as as time passes on, and and maybe as um, as we're kind of starting to see how our body naturally is looking, like there's kind of there is a a variation, right? Like depending on muscular strength, like how or muscle mass, right? Like of the of the abs. Um, that's going to vary between individuals and how much, um, fat is there. Like that's going to vary and and change the way it looks, um, how we're eating the time of day. Like we all bloat towards Mm -hmm. the end of the day and that's so normal. Um, and that tends to be when we are like looking in the mirror and comparing ourselves to the ones we see on Instagram. Right. Mm -hmm or our before pictures that we took and also are aspiring to get back to. Yeah. Yeah. We can, we can be our worst, our work, our before pictures can sometimes be our worst enemies. Totally. Um, but, but yeah, so then it's just like, it's really just, we're talking about gaining strength back and the literature we're still, um, it's still, of course, you know, developing, um, we don't have clear literature saying that anything you did in pregnancy caused that or made that worse. Or like, we do not have any of that literature correlating that. Um, we don't have literature saying that it's, you know, correlated to pelvic floor problems or low back pain. Like all of that still kind of, we don't, we don't have those answers, but what we do know is that people who present with diastasis or, or with that gap, um, are, are weaker in their core. Mm -hmm. 
So what do we do? We get it stronger. Yeah. We strengthen the core, (laughs) you know? And, and, and that is something like, I think a lot of people, you know, will do hollow holds and, and feel like they're doing it right. And think that they're, you know, strengthening their core. Um, and, and and they're not. And so, (laughs) you know, like if you look around in a class doing hollow holds, how many, how many people can you slide your hand under their low back? Like, right. There should like not be everyone. air in there. Like right. it's a, yeah. it's a, yeah. it's a yeah. hollow hole. Like it should be, it should be flat. So, so teaching people how to actually do what your coach is telling you to do. Right. Um, and, and sometimes that means regressing, like maybe you don't have your arms out and your legs out and you feel like a wimp because your yep. arms are in and your legs, but you have a much better contraction at your core and you're getting totally. stronger there. Like, remember, that's what we're doing. Totally. That's what we're oh. here for. I haven't done hollow holds probably in two or three years because I found that when, and like, obviously like the last eight months I've had a baby. And then before that I was pregnant for almost a year, but all I'm saying is like, even before I got pregnant, I started to recognize and understand when we first Mm -hmm. started talking about kids and I was like, I need to make sure that I need, like my body is doing what I needed to do. I started to understand that I have been coning forever. Mm, in hollow mm-hmm. holds and in V ups. Those are two movements that I yeah. basically took out of my training ever since I like got off the pill in 2018. And we started talking mm-hmm. about maybe having a baby at some point. I was like, I need to fix this shit because I'm not my, I don't do this right. Like instinctively the way I yeah. present pressure in my abdomen is not, is not making me stronger. It's just kind mm-hmm. of like herniating out the center basically. Yeah. So yeah. I like forever have taken those movements out and to this day, anytime there's hollow holds and skill work or something I'm doing like cat cows and bird dogs and, and other mm. things in a correct well, we way. We should talk about that. Oh, why? Should, why? Because you just need to like, you just need to contract like your, your lower, your yeah, lower yeah. Or, or I'm, or I'm doing them in a way that is like yeah, well, yeah, yeah. very, very scaled back. Totally. Totally. Or totally. I'm like, I'm like yeah. rocking in like a dead bug <laughs> position, basically. Like I'm, I'm eyes on my stomach. And the second it looks like it's like moving, I'm like, well, that's as far as I'm going. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. I, it's so, it's so fun um, to like, it, it's funny actually to, to go through some of that stuff. Cause like I am by no means the best at the gym at all, but, um, oh, I we're am gonna talk about that. Cause I'm pretty sure you're in an open <laughs> announcement, but yeah, great. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best. <laughs> um, but I am enthusiastic and I, um, but I will always be the first one to scale on things like hollow holds. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I'm like, there's no shame in this. You know, I'm like, I am doing, I'm doing it by the books and therefore I'm getting a lot of strength that's transitioning to me being better at the things I want to be better at, like the pull-ups and blah, 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 all that stuff. Yeah. hundred percent. Can we talk about the fact that you, uh, literally were like a competitor in an open announcement? I don't know if you guys didn't see this. It was the final open announcement of this past open and it was, um, the Icelandic team versus the U S local team, team America, (laughs) if you will. Um, and Alexis, it was you and, and three other folks from your gym that kind of were, I don't want to this is, I don't mean to like diss you by calling you the everyday oh, CrossFitters, girl. but it was like we, the everyday CrossFitters yeah. versus, yeah. um, the, the games champions. And it was really, really fun to watch. And honestly, oh. like watching you just absolutely dominate in those bar muscle ups. And I, I just felt like you were representing oh me and every other person I know who steps into the gym, who tries to just better themselves every day. And maybe we're like Mm -hmm. competing with each other. We're trying to win the gym or we're trying to like, none of us are going to the games, but we're, we're certainly trying to win something for ourselves. And it was awesome Mm -hmm. watching you. What in the world was that experience like for you? Oh my gosh. Well, I have chills and tears hearing you say that. (laughs) I mean, it was, it was really crazy because you know, I'm like, it is one thing to be on the, on that stage and like have earned it, you know, with Mm -hmm. your fitness. Um, and I'm like, I hope I can get my muscle ups today. Like, (laughs) (laughs) yup. Every said everyone that day, literally. (laughs) So it was, it was definitely like such a crazy experience. Um, and it was weird because 
so yeah, so um, on our, our team, the other female is, is Lindsay McDuffie and she owns our, our gym and she was a games athlete. She's mm -hmm. been a regional competitor. Like she is, she is the best. And um, so I'm with her and then my husband, Zach Morgan, and then our, our friend, Logan Martin. And so, and, and they, the boys are just, they're always training all the time, like pushing one another. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I actually, when they came to us, when we kind of had this meeting of like, it's going to be us. Um, I'm like, am I going to embarrass myself? No, <laughs> Really? I mean, yes. I'm like, but we're going against the best. Yeah. Like, this is going to be horrible. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, no. They're, we're going to give you time. Like, and I'm like, okay, well, they're professionals at this. They're, they're, they're probably going to somehow make us look good. Yeah. Um, so I guess we're going to go with it. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and, and that's really what it was. And it, it was funny. Cause I just, I knew I was like, when, when the workout and when the whole, like, you know, the logistics, once we knew those, I'm like, okay, I will be last. And I know that. Um, and I'm just going to have to do my best and we're yeah. just going to keep rolling. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what I did. I have never been so thirsty in my life. Mm -hmm. All those lights. I don't, how do you do that? I feel like you always have lights on you. I, I'm always so real hot. sweaty. Yeah. 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 Always and real, so real thirsty. Sweaty. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And I had a, just a totally different perspective on, um, like how these athletes go out here, you know, not only are they competing and like doing the hardest things ever that I can do, but they're, they're doing it under cameras and lights mm -hmm. and all of it. And mm -hmm. everyone's analyzing what they're doing, you know? And I'm like, I'm going to become memes. Like, what are people going to say? You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, truly. Yeah, I get it. I will never, ever, ever live down the meme of like being really, really big and pregnant and sweaty and standing in front of that big ass fan out on the field at games. Like my arm, my fingers, like digging in under my support hose, uh -huh. like trying to like hike it up under my boobs into the boob sweat. And John just snapped a picture. Uh -huh. forever will be that meme. <laughs> and I'm, that's fine. That's totally fine. But yes, I understand what you're saying fully. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was just, yeah, it was, it was unreal. Um, and I was, and we were like, you know, is anybody going to enjoy this? And, and there was a couple of, uh, you know, internet comments, um, mm -hmm. they can be harmful. Um, and prior to, and I was like, oh, and podcasts, you know, people are like, why are they doing just some random people? Like they should have done, you know, Iceland versus mayhem or versus prevent wh whatever. And, um, I'm like, you know, nobody's going to like this. Like mm -hmm. we are just people that they don't, all of our friends think it's cool and that's it. And then like, just hearing you as you're introducing this and I'm having mm -hmm. chills and tears like that. I've had so many people reach out to me and say like they were inspired and like, thank you for representing us. And like, yeah. that was the best episode ever. Like yes. all of these things. And like, that has just been to me just so impactful and so, um, just rewarding. I mean, I'm like, oh, I was, I was totally wrong. Everyone liked that. And I'm glad 100%. I was wrong on that. hundred <laughs> percent. That was, I think that was also my favorite episode that, that, and then a few years ago, I can't remember exactly what year, but the, the way that the open announcements were, it was like, it was like the elite athletes went and then immediately mm -hmm. after they broadcast a round mm -hmm. of like RX athletes at the local gym and scaled athletes at the local gym that they were doing. That was also my favorite. I liked watching that more than I liked watching the elite section, watching like the scaled athletes, like do bear crawls and like do all the uh. movements that they, and I remember specifically one of them was like, it was in like tech Valley or something in California. And the, the woman who did it was like, she's like, I've been crossfitting for like three months or six months or something oh, like so under cool. a year and went out and did this open water. And I was like, this is why I'm here. Like, yes. this is why I watch this shit a hundred percent. Like yes. I'll watch the games for the elite athletes, but the open uh -huh. announcements and for like community building events and to like, get me hype. Like that's the shit that's that it. I am loving, loving to watch. So I'm 
Thank you for doing that because you were brave that day. And you took on a lot for the rest of us to get that like feeling that warm and fuzzy Mm. feeling inside. So thank you for, for volunteering as tribute, so to speak. I got, I got some noble stuff out of it. There you go. Pictures. So, you know, (laughs) always do it for the gear. hundred percent. hundred percent. Well, Alexis, thank you so, so much for kind of chatting with me about all of these things. I know we kind of went off the rails at some point. Um, but I I also want to say before we fully wrap up that part Mm -hmm. of what you do, that's really important to me is all of the context around the health advice and wellness advice that you give when I was Mm -hmm. first, first postpartum and still very much living in the trauma of my delivery, Mm -hmm. I got on a zoom call with you and a bunch of the other women that you work with, um, at, Mm -hmm. is it ice physio? Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. Ice physio. And y'all just had me tell my birth story. And I Mm -hmm. remember at the time being like, first of all, it was a cathartic experience. So thank you for that. But I remember Mm -hmm. being like, why does this matter? These are a bunch of PTs. Mm -hmm. Like, why do they care? I mean, I like talking about what I went through. And I think it's important to raise awareness about the fact that some things can be more difficult than others. But I just remember being like, why do these women care for what they're doing in, in their workplace? And, and now having a good understanding of the fact that there's so much more that goes into that type of care and that Mm -hmm. time of care for women, it just means a lot to me that you guys are putting in the work to like listen to birth stories and, and talk to people about recovery mentally and emotionally Mm -hmm. outside of just what's happening in their vaginas that it like Mm -hmm. matters. It all matters. So I just, that is important. And I want people to know that you're doing that work. Um, cause you know, you listening to my story, I know is going to help 10 other women that someday come to you being like, I just don't want to piss myself anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like it's all related. It is, it is. And, and thank you. Thank you for, for sharing it and for, Mm -hmm talking with us back then. And I, I think it's, I, I love what you do and, and just talking and, and telling stories. And, um, you know, it's funny cause we're in this connected world, but we're mm-hmm. not really connected, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's like, we're just seeing all of the like highlight reels of the good thing. And I know we, I know we all kind of know that, but like, but really, like when we get sucked into our phones, we can just really get into a, a bad place. And so having this time where, where we're face to face or whatever, zoom screen, zoom to screen, to zoom. See, <laughs> <laughs> like that is so, so important for our, our souls. And like, that's what really fulfills us. And, um, and, and yeah, so that's why I'm like, I just, I want to have that with, with clients, you know, I want to teach other, other PTs, how to do that with their, with their people. And, and we want to keep people in gyms because that's like, I'm like, that's where we go for our social hour. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm sorry, coach that I keep talking, but I love these girls around me. So yeah, yeah. It's also <laughs> you know, important. For yeah, sure. it is. It is. So, so thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Of course. Where, um, if people are interested, if people want to like find a, an ice physiotherapist near them, or if they want to maybe get with you to learn more about how you're helping yeah. PTs, you know, get more of this knowledge and education, what can mm-hmm. they do? Yeah. So, um, I'm on Instagram at uh, just me personally at Alexis Morgan PT for physical therapy. And, um, you can learn more about the company that I teach with at ice physio. Um, and you know, we are working, actually we're, we're updating our, our website to kind of, um, at ice physio, because we have so many more ice trained physical therapists and, and within ice, you know, we, kind of one of our, our biggest things that we, that we talk about is, is being fitness forward, um, and, and keeping people in the gyms. And so it's becoming, you know, just more and more important for people to have their PT who is going to keep them in their CrossFit gym. So anyways, we're, we're kind of working on the backside of that. That's not, not quite done, but you can message me, um, on Instagram and I'd be happy to direct you to someone who can help you because, you deserve the help Mm -hmm. and you can find someone to help you. Um, so it's just finding that right person and, and getting that, that right connection. So message me on there. 
Perfect. That's awesome. All right, Alexis, thank you so much for coming on. For anyone listening, as always, I'm so open to ideas and topics. And if you if you have a thought on what another focus on female episode should be about, uh, send me a DM or an email or whatever it may be. Comment on the YouTube channel. I'll keep an eye on there and um, hope to be producing a lot more of these episodes soon. So for everyone listening, thank you so much. And we will talk to you soon.